Hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime, and yes folks, I do read the comments. You guys know if you're not into our intro segments, we have timestamps down here to literally every single story. But for those that do, thank you so much. Uh, for every video this month, if we can get a thousand likes in the first 24 hours, uh, we'll do a special giveaway uh, to someone down in the comments. You know, yesterday I said $50 eShop gift card. Today, let's screw it. Let's go to a $100 eShop gift card if it happens in the first 24 hours. I know some people think that goal seems a little far-fetched, but you know what? Get, say 500 is really easy. You guys really smash that like button. So we have to make the goal something to be strived for, not something that just, hey, we could just get this willy-nilly. So yeah, we have had lots of videos get a thousand likes in the past. So it's a goal for a reason. It's not supposed to be easily attainable, but you guys determine how easily attainable it is. Beyond that, uh, we do have a giveaway happening on the 28th called Prime giving there's a link down in the description and the pinned comment to enter for the grand prize which is a hundred dollars donated to charity you also want to switch oled for yourself and a bunch of other things bundled in with it including a satisfy grip uh, also on that uh on the 28th when we're doing prime giving which is a live stream where we are going to announce the grand prize winner i also have to say uh one if you're not at that live stream we you can't win so you need to be at that live stream to win the grand prize we also are going to be giving away several other things during prime giving including a couple Game & Watches. We actually have a special edition Pokemon Switch Lite we're gonna be giving away, along with several other prizes. We're trying to give back as much to the community this holiday season as possible. So yeah, it's gonna be a really, really fun event. We're probably gonna do some gaming, um, some tournaments, some competitions. Uh, it's gonna just be a grand old time. Eric from the Nintendo Prime Podcast is gonna be there. Speaking of the Nintendo Prime Podcast, it now has its own YouTube channel. And while the podcast is not fully moved over, we just did a new episode, episode 26, last night right here on this channel. Uh, we are slowly transitioning to having the entire podcast be on its own channel. What The only thing stopping us at this point is one, we, we are still working on getting all of the old episodes up at that channel. So if you have subscribed to the podcast channel and you're like, why are you posting up the old episodes? because we need to host them all at the same spot. People need to be able to go through a playlist on the official podcast channel and actually be able to go back and watch all the old episodes. So we have to get those old episodes up and there's no way to publish them without them being considered new videos. That's just how it works. So we are tossing all those videos over there. They eventually then won't be available as an archive here, at least of the new version. Our old podcast that went 100 plus episodes, we're not moving that one over. That could just stay here and stay in our archives. But the new one is going to be over there and eventually the live stream version of it is going to be there as well. We won't be live streaming it here uh, at some point. I don't know when that point's going to be because we need to unlock all of YouTube's functionality, which starts with a thousand subscribers, but also 4,000 watch hours. And I think there's a few other functions that are actually hidden behind like 5,000 subscribers. Um, so there's some functionality we want to make sure that channel has in general. And no, folks, it's not just the ability to monetize. Obviously, people know that is a big function on YouTube, but there's actually other functionalities, community posts, um, you know, certain stream notifications that won't go out until you're at certain thresholds. So we have a lot that we need to get sorted out there. But again, it's going to be a slow process, but I'm kind of hoping by the time we get to January that we're able to fully host it over there. It also ensures that you actually might get notified when we're doing the podcast because the only thing going up there, there's not daily video content and all that. There is a much higher chance that because there's less content posted there, you actually have a higher percentage chance of being notified of when that's going to happen. And so then you don't miss an episode. Uh, don't worry, we'll still advertise and remind people when episodes are gonna be happening at this channel through community posts or mentioning it on videos like this. But yeah, I know this was a really long intro. It's why I mentioned we have timestamps down below because guess what? We have some massive stories today. Huge Pokemon news. I mean, this news, I'm, I'm shocked by this. And by the way, uh, Zelda news, like real Zelda news, or at least I, I think this is a pretty big story. I think it's maybe the biggest Zelda news we've had since the announcement of, I don't know, Skyward Sword HD. I mean, I guess if you could start the Zelda game and watch a big announcement, but uh, this is bigger than that for sure. That being said, let's get right into today's gaming news. So first up, our first story deals with something that isn't necessarily a Nintendo story, but it sort of is because of what the company doesn't do. 
So Phil Spencer actually called out the entire gaming industry, specifically platform holders, uh, and says everyone should be supporting emulation. We all know Nintendo is inf infamously not that supportive of emulation. They go after ROM sites, and also Nintendo themselves doesn't really seem to care about providing their back catalog of games in a convenient manner. They do have some available through Nintendo Switch Online, but uh, obviously there's missing a lot. Even Virtual Console left a lot to be desired. Uh, so here is um, here, here's some details on what Phil Spencer said just late yesterday. He said, notably with Nintendo, uh, not only the stance against PC emulation, but because Nintendo doesn't seem to care all that much about actual game preservation, uh, but ensuring all games are being made available that when they possibly can. So while Phil doesn't specifically mention he's talking about PC emulation, so the you know pirating, uh, he does mention something in general. He goes, my hope. And I think I have to present it that way as of now, is as an industry, we'd work on legal emulation that allowed modern hardware to run any, within reason, older execu executable, allowing someone to play any game. I think in the end, if we said, hey, anybody should be able to buy any game or own any game and continue to play, that seems like a great North Star for us as an industry. This obviously came in wake of Xbox announcing 76 new backwards compatible games on the Xbox Series platforms um, during the Xbox 20th anniversary event. But unfortunately, that's probably going to be the last batch added for quite some time, and Phil Spencer explains why. While we continue to stay focused on preserving and enhancing the art form of games, we have actually reached the limit of our ability to bring new games to the catalog from the past due to licensing, legal, and technical constraints. So there could be some games that just technologically can't run on the system. And then obviously there's gonna be legal and licensing issues as well. So he fully admits, hey look, we have done everything we can to bring every possible game backwards compatible to Xbox Series X, whether it's natively or digitally. And frankly, we can't really do much else about it. Now, there are possible workarounds, by the way, to the backwards compatibility issue and really the licensing problem. Um, one, one, one methodology is obviously um, Xbox has always used discs and you can stick in discs all the way back from the original Xbox with that Duke controller into the Xbox Series X and um, be able to play it. But um, not all of them. And there is a way to actually en enable this usually through modifying the platform. Uh, to allow those games to work but i think they're just worried about licensing and uh, upsetting some ip right holders and stuff like that so uh but i think one thing we could say about phil spencer since he took over the xbox team is he has very much cared about backwards compatibility this isn't stuff by the way that really makes them money this is just enabling games you already own like he has very much been supportive of this idea that any game should always be purchasable or at least playable on modern hardware uh, which is like the exact opposite stance of Nintendo, which they're not saying, you know, people like Nintendo shouldn't charge money. They're saying, hey, make all of your games available, not just a select library. And you should be attempting to get all the third party games around your platform available too, within reason, you know, depending on what those third parties are asking for, for licensing fees and rights. So it's a lot to say Phil Spencer is, uh, you might not like Xbox, you might not like Phil Spencer, but it's hard to argue against this this is just a generally genuinely great thing um, and to have a leader of one of the major platform holders out there come out and so openly support emulation and openly support you know game preservation is i mean it's it's bold considering that sony and nintendo haven't dared to even come close to making these sort of statements um maybe you could argue it's all to get goodwill of gamers but if so um I'd rather you get goodwill through doing good things. And actually, you know, the proof is in the pudding. These aren't just empty words. Xbox Series X is literally the best backwards compatible gaming device we have ever had. And even then, uh, there is the ability to actually uh, purchase a certain app on the Xbox Store, the Microsoft Store, on Xbox Series X and S that actually lets you use PC emulators anyways. Um, that's how open he is. He's not even blocking the ability to use PC emulators. This is, I mean, this is just mind boggling um, in all the right ways. Next up, I need to let you know about this before it's sold out. Maybe it's sold out by the time you hear about it, but uh, 
Yeah, Pokemon Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl, right? Comes out tomorrow officially. A lot of people might be playing it later today if the digital versions become playable or your physical version arrives early or their stores obviously selling it early, which they have been for a couple weeks. But here's what's really cool. So they have the twin pack, right? Which doesn't save you any money. It's just a kind of a convenient package. It gives you Brilliant Diamond and Shiny Pearl for $119. As I said, it's not a money saving thing. It's more of a collector's item. You know, you're not really getting anything besides like the box. The box that's like elongated and wider um, is something unique to it, I suppose, over just buying them individually. Uh, but Walmart has a very interesting listing for it right now. So $119 is what it typically is, except at the time of recording, you can actually buy these games, the combo pack on walmart.com for $70.80. Let that sink in. That's $50 off. Is this a ploy for Walmart to get you to trust them this holiday season? Maybe, but Walmart, it would be losing a significant chunk of money per sold. So you would feel like this is a pricing error but that $70.80 is a very specific thing, and it does mark as an official discount on their website. So $70.80 for the Twin Pack? All right. Um, that's... Damn. So on our next story, this is just kind of a really neat thing Nintendo does. And, and they do this once in a while where they offer a free update that adds some, some really neat functionality that no, most companies might charge for, or you could argue should have been there at launch. Although I think in the case of this specific game, you can kind of understand why it wasn't because there was a sort of a proof of concept that needed to happen before you decide to invest more. And um, we're talking about Mario Kart Live Home Circuit. Uh, for those that are, still don't know what that is after it's been out over a year, uh, Mario Kart Live Home Circuit is a, a new Mario Kart game on Switch. Unlike Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, it's not a port, it's only on Switch. And you basically, it's like 100 bucks, or it was, it's actually gonna be $60 this holiday. So it's a great time to add this functionality when it's gonna be the cheapest it's ever been. Um, and what it does is it comes with a physical cart uh, actually, I have that physical. See, I wish I would have thought ahead of time. I actually have it. It's upstairs. Um, that you know, you can actually drive around and you create your own Mario Kart courses in your house. It's really cool, and you were able to obviously use it with up to four players. But everyone had to have their own Switch, their own carts, and their own copy of the game. Which yeah, the carts come with a copy of the game, but. Uh, anyways, it was really, really neat, and there's been numerous videos of people making homemade courses, and it's a lot of fun. It's especially fun for families and kids, but even adults are enjoying making their own courses. And the game has actually sold fairly well. It's not obviously doing Mario Kart 8 Deluxe kind of numbers, but you know, it has sold multiple millions of copies that includes a physical cart alone, which is really cool that you can remote control with your Switch. It's awesome. Uh, well, they added a 2.0 update today that I mean, if it wasn't compelling before, and now that it's only gonna be $60, it's definitely compelling now. This 2.0 update um, that released today added split screen support for two players. So yeah, now you no longer need multiple switches to control two carts. That is huge. Um, beyond that, uh, it added swappable characters. So yeah, you can't swap the character on the physical thing, but when you're looking at the screen, you could swap out Mario and Luigi, which are the two available cards now, for Toad and a whole cast of characters that you could swap in uh, to add some variety. So that's really cool. They also added a four player relay mode. Uh, what this means is teams of two, and again, you can do this all on one switch, uh, can swap control of the cart and the items. So like one person can drive the cart, um, and like when you, when you get past a certain lap, another person takes over, or you can have like a person drive the cart and one person handle the item uses. So it's like, a, a, think like Mario Kart Double Dash style with, with like co-op and stuff like that per thing. I, I think this is amazing and this is a great feature set and they've added this absolutely for free and this fundamentally makes Mario Kart Live just that much better. Again, features you could argue would have been nice to have the right launch, but it's such a unique concept for a Mar Mario Kart game that you can understand that, hey, you know what, there's just, let's see how well the concept does. And then it obviously did well enough for them to continue to innovate and add these additional features in that I'm not even sure if people were asking for. Although the split screen, I think, was something people were asking for because multiple switches, well, you know, not, not a big deal because you'll have multiple copies of the game if you have multiple carts. It's still, you know, hey, that's, you know, an extra $200 minimum for a light to do that. Uh, so yeah, this is, I, I, I like this idea. I like what they're doing here. Kudos, Nintendo deserves credit when they do things right. This is something right. I like when Nintendo does these surprise updates that people didn't expect, and they're doing it at the perfect time right before the holiday season. Clearly timed at the, t uh, at the right time to try to convince people to go out and buy Mario Kart Live this holiday. 
And I can tell you from experience, Mario Kart Live is a lot of fun. We did do a video on it uh, back when it came out, and it was hella fun. Uh, so, yeah, it, it's definitely enjoyable. And my kids are asking weekly uh, when they can do another Mario Kart custom thing with me because making courses is just so much fun. You can make your own ramps and um, add your own obstacles, and oh, it's, just, it's just a blast. This next story is less of a story, but just like Miyamoto had his birthday the other day and turned 69, another major uh, uh, anniversary date has come up for something at Nintendo. That being the Nintendo GameCube. As of today in North America, the Nintendo GameCube has turned 20 years old. Um, the Nintendo GameCube was obviously one of Nintendo's last attempts to be like a PlayStation, like an Xbox, a traditional gaming console. This predates right before the Wii and then the Wii U and now the Switch with being, you know, a hybrid. This is the end of the Nintendo trying to do what everyone else is doing era. Uh, and it, it was a really interesting system. Obviously, people still love the controller to date. That's why GameCube controller support has basically been on Wii, Wii U, and now Switch. GameCube controller support just keeps going through because people love the GameCube controller, especially for Smash. Uh, and what I find really uh, interesting about thinking back on my fondest GameCube memories is sometimes it's not even the Nintendo games I'm thinking of. I mean, yeah, we had the Wind Waker, which I played a hell of a lot of. We had, uh, you know, other games as well on there, but I remember playing a ton of Prince of Persia on there. I played uh, Lord of the Rings Return of the King a ton on the GameCube back in the day. Time Splitters, I played a lot of that on the GameCube. These are third-party offerings. Obviously, we know about Resident Evil 4. We could talk about the games you guys all know and love, but I like focusing on some of my fondest memories of GameCube, which wasn't even the Nintendo games, even though there was like Animal Crossing as an IP started on GameCube. So there's so many great things we could talk about in terms of Nintendo's offerings. But I like thinking about this being that one system where third parties still put in quite a bit of effort to Nintendo uh, to show it to some support. And unfortunately, the GameCube flopped in sales and it just ended up not working out. But um, still a really important part of Nintendo's history and still one of those things that I really would like to see a lot of these games come back and make them available on Nintendo Switch Online Service or some sort of virtual console or even a classic system. Um, again, Phil Spencer told us how important stuff like that is. So um, maybe someday. Uh, so our final story is a big one, but obviously I have to tell you guys, it's Rumor City put your tinfoil hats on, but I'll maybe give some credence to why there might be more to this than you may realize. Um, we're talking about Samus Hunter saying something that isn't just a little tidbit. When Samus Hunter goes out on a line uh, in the past and has said things uh, that are a very matter of fact, like she's pretty much been right every single time. This time around, if you're a Zelda fan, you better be watching the Game Awards on December 9th. Here is what Samus Hunter boldly, just flat out boldly stated on Twitter. The 35th anniversary of The Legend of Zelda will continue at the Game Awards. What does this mean? Well, for starters, on the light side, music there's there's music at the game awards every year guessing there's going to be some sort of 35th anniversary zelda musical composition maybe a symphony orchestra situation fully expect that to be a thing but i don't think that that's exactly all that she means now it could be all that she means but i doubt it because i mean that's you know we've already had symphonies and orchestras celebrating zelda including ones that we could go to ourselves so it wouldn't really feel like much of a celebration, more of a, hey, remember? It's the 35th anniversary of Zelda, which could just leave a sour note in Zelda fans' minds if they did that and nothing else, because Nintendo didn't really celebrate the 35th anniversary of Zelda. And by the way, doing a big Zelda medley compilation would just be something Jeff Keighley does, not something Nintendo necessarily does. So what would Nintendo be doing with the 35th anniversary of Zelda at the Game Awards? couple things that we could potentially expect and this is all speculation one a title reveal for the breath of the wild two now maybe that's asking a little much and wouldn't necessarily be a 35th anniversary thing because hey oh we're you know it's a 2022 game already but still zelda fans would be really happy about that but it wouldn't necessarily be a 35th anniversary 
um, specific thing, but it could be something that maybe is tossed on. But how about this? Twilight Princess and the Wind Waker HD announced for spring of 2022. Remember, when uh, Eiji Anomu back at E3 boldly stated that they were only do doing the Zelda game and watch for the 35th anniversary, and at that time, they had no other Zelda games in development or any other thing in development for the 35th anniversary. That was probably true at that time. You know what could happen six months later? Seven months later? They could have started porting Twilight Princess HD and the Wind Waker HD with a third-party company like Tantalus or, um, you know, whatever. There, there's a whole group of companies out there that could have been doing this, Grezzo included. We've been talking about this for a while. Jeff Grubb, you know, thought the games were coming this year and has, uh, last time we heard from him on these games, stated they are coming next year. Now we have Samus that are saying, 35th anniversary of Zelda continues at the Game Awards. Are you hyped yet? Are you hyped yet? I just got told there's a very likely chance by someone who's been super reliable, regardless if you want to think Samus Hunter's fake news, I don't care. Here's what I can say about Samus Hunter in her defense. All the people that claim that she's fake news based it on other Nintendo insiders saying that she's not a real insider. But here are the facts of the situation. She has been more accurate about the things she has said than any other insider this side of Practical Brush 12 on Reddit. More accurate than Emily Rogers, who everyone readily believes. More accurate than Jeff Grubb, an actual, you know, industry insider and journalist. More accurate than even people like, I don't know, Dr. Cupcake. More accurate than Liam. More accurate than pretty much any Nintendo insider that's ever existed. So even if she is not actually the source of this information and she's vetting this from other leakers and insiders and then releasing out only the stuff that ends up being right, that still lends <laughs> credence to the fact that there's going to be something Zelda 35th anniversary related at the damn Game Awards. That alone is exciting. So if you weren't thinking about watching the Game Awards before, and you're a Zelda fan, you might want to rethink it. And you know where you can watch the Game Awards? Right here at Nintendo Prime. That's right, we will be live streaming the Game Awards on December 9th. We're gonna have a pre-show, we're gonna have a post-show. We have a betting special that we just did on the podcast yesterday to keep track of during that event. Eric's gonna be part of the Game Awards event. Gosh knows, we'll probably end up giving some stuff away because that's just what we do at this channel for major events. It's gonna be a blast, it's gonna be a lot of fun. We get to see my raw reactions. Eric's Raw Reactions, to see what wins awards, what other crazy stuff gets announced. But now I'm expecting Zelda something at the Game Awards, which I wasn't sure. Like, I had in the back of my mind, maybe a Breath of the Wild 2 trailer or something. Now I'm thinking, oh my gosh, actual new port or game announcements. Hell to the yeah, baby! Oh, I'm hyped! Oh! Let's go! All right, folks, I'm Nathaniel RoboJets from Nintendo Prime. Thank you so much for tuning in. I love when we get to end with a hot fire story about Zelda, my favorite franchise of all time. I'll catch you guys in the next video.